Assalamu alaikum. The mainstay in the management of allergic rhinitis is pharmacological, but there are other treatment modalities worth of consideration. The management plan for allergic rhinitis would depend heavily on pharmacological treatment. Other treatment modalities worth of consideration are methods of reducing allergens exposure, immunotherapy for allergic rhinitis, surgical options, and complementary therapies. The cardinal symptoms of nasal allergy are nasal itching or sneezing, nasal discharge, nasal obstruction, and impaired sense of smell, and they are being controlled by one or a combination of these medications group, including oral antihistamines, which is effective in the control of sneezing and nasal discharge. Topical corticosteroids is very effective in the control of sneezing and nasal discharge, and to a lesser extent on the nasal obstruction and the sense of smell. One or two short courses of oral corticosteroids may be required from time to time, and they are again very effective in the control of all the uh, allergic symptoms. Sodium chromoglycate is, can be used in seasonal rhinitis, and it is uh, moderately effective in the control of sneezing and discharge. Ipratropium bromide is very effective in the control of nasal discharge, and antiricotrines is also effective in the control of nasal discharge. Well, there are other treatment modalities worth of consideration. Among these is the methods for allergens avoidance and methods for environmental uh, control. In fact, the recommendation from the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery is that patients should be advised on the avoidance of known allergens to them or may be advised on methods of environmental control. And this recommendation is based on uh, randomized control trials with mi minor limitations and also on several observational studies and the grade of the recommendation is B. Of the measures used for environmental control uh, to reduce allergens levels and patient symptoms, these five measures were investigated repeatedly to see if they can reduce the allergens levels or the patient symptoms. This include removal of uh, pets, washing of the pets regularly, at least twice weekly, the use of acaricides, which are chemicals used to kill house dust mites, and the use of air impermeable covers for the beddings, and the use of air filtration, or any of these measures combined. Um, all these measures are good in reducing the allergens levels. They all can reduce the allergen levels, but only two of them can actually reduce the patient symptoms. That is uh, the removal of the pets and the use of acaricides, or a combination that includes these two factors. Washing pets regularly does not help in reducing patient symptoms, although it helps in reducing the allergens load, and the use of impermeable covers for the bedding is the same, no improvement in the patient's symptoms, and the same for the use of air filtration. The second non-medicinal treatment option for allergic rhinitis is immunotherapy. And in fact, uh, immunotherapy was given an A-grade recommendation by the American Association of Otolaryngology based on several randomized controlled trials and systematic reviews with a preponderance of benefits over harm. The advice is if the patient has an inadequate response of his symptoms to pharmacological therapy, combined or not combined with environmental controls, then he should be offered a referral to immunotherapy, either sublingual or subcutaneous. Specific immunotherapy is the only treatment modality of allergic rhinitis that has a proven uh, potential to change the course of the disease, the natural history of allergic rhinitis itself. The patient should have an IgE-mediated allergic rhinitis confirmed with specific allergy testing. Immunotherapy can be effective in patients who have not responded to pharmacological treatment either uh, totally or partially. 
there is good evidence to support that immunotherapy is actually cost effective by saving money spent on uh, medications. The positive effects of immunotherapy would start to show after a few weeks, up to one year. The treatment itself would take several years, typically between three and five years, either the uh, subcutaneous or the sublingual route. There are uh, about eight randomized controlled trials that have suggested that the subcutaneous route is a bit more effective than the sublingual route of immunotherapy. In addition to the group of patients who had failed to respond to medical treatment, either, med either partially or totally, the immunotherapy should be offered to patients who have systemic allergic reactions towards stinging instincts like bees or wasps, and to patients who have allergic reactions towards specific allergen, proven either by the repeated history or by specific allergic tests, or to patients in whom avoidance of a certain allergen in the future is unavoidable, or to patients who have other uh, coexisting conditions like sinusitis, asthma, or both. On the other hand, immunotherapy may not be advised if the patient has cardiovascular disease, if he has, has an unstable asthma, if the patient has autoimmune conditions or malignancy, if the patient has respiratory problems recently, if the patient is taking a beta blocker or ACE inhibitors, and in pregnant patients. Both immunotherapy techniques, the subcutaneous and the sublingual techniques, are effective in the control of allergic rhinitis symptoms, and this is well supported by evidence from several randomized controlled trials and systematic reviews. Their safety profile is also good. There are no recorded deaths with the sublingual and only one per 2.5 million injections with the subcutaneous. Systematic reactions, the rate of 0.05% for the sublingual and 0.06% to 0.9% for the subcutaneous. The FDA has approved the subcutaneous immunotherapy technique, it should be administered in a clinical setting. The FDA has approved the tablet form of the sublingual immunotherapy. The aqueous form used is off-label. The first dose should be taken in a clinical setting, and after that it can be uh, taken at home. Another treatment option is the intranasal botulinum toxin A which is quite effective in decreasing the allergic rhinitis symptoms. This effect is due to its uh, suppressing action of the parasympathetic nerves to the nasal mucosa. It inhibits the release of acetylcholine from the presynaptic nerve terminals at the neuromuscular and the neuroglandular uh, junctions. In fact, botulinum toxin A injection has a stronger effect on suppressing nasal uh, rhinorrhea than steroid injection. Surgical intervention is another treatment option to be considered. Starting with the inferior turbinate reduction, the American Association consider this an optional treatment and clinicians may offer this to patients who have allergic rhinitis if their nasal airway is blocked by enlarged inferior turbinates and they have failed medical treatment. The evidence quality is grade C and the level of confidence is moderate because the uh, treatment option was based on observational studies. The submucosal inferior turbinate reduction improves the nasal airway and allows access for topical nasal steroids. The complications are limited, it has high efficacy, low risk, and relatively low cost. Several surgical techniques were suggested for the inferior turbinate reduction, including turbinectomy, in which an entire portion of the inferior turbinates are resected, submucous resection, in which only the tissues between the mucosal cover and the bones are removed, and tissue ablation 
uh, by shrinking the volume of the turbinates with laser cautery, electro cautery, or cryotherapy. A prospective and randomized study on almost 400 patients were conducted to see if there is any difference between these different procedures, and it came out that the submucous resection without fracturing of the inferior turbinates was the most effective surgical therapy and had the fewest complication rate. Inferior turbinate reduction not only improves the nasal airway, but may also help in reducing the allergic rhinitis symptoms, particularly rhinorrhea and sneezing. And this has been suggested from several uncontrolled studies, including one prospective study of a cohort of 60 patients who had under, underwent inferior turbinate reduction when they were followed up initially within a year at 2 and 12 months the uh, reports confirmed reduction of rhinorrhea and sneezing the same cohort was then reviewed at three and five years and there was sustained improvement of the symptoms of nasal congestion sneezing and rhinorrhea the parasympathetic nerve supply of the nose comes from peripheral branches of the sphenopalatine ganglion they are responsible for increasing the blood flow and for supplying the mucous glands. Some of these branches, the posterior superior nasal nerves, come through separate foramens directly into the nose, posterior and inferior to the sphenopalatine foramen and artery. They supply the superior and middle turbinate and superior and middle meati. Other parasympathetic branches join the greater palatine nerve, descends with it in its canal, and enters the nose nearer to the floor through a foramen in the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. It forms the inferior posterior nasal nerve. The technique for posterior nasal neurectomy is quite similar to the technique for sphenopalatine artery ligation. It starts with an elevation of a nasal mucosal flap posterior to the posterior fontanelle whether you have a middle meatus antrostomy or not. The flap is elevated and the first structure to be encountered would be the ethmoidal crest, and which is a landmark for the sphenopalatine artery. This is the sphenopalatine artery there. And just posterior and inferior to it, you start to see some of the branches of the posterior nasal nerves. It's usual to uh, isolate the artery and clip it and you start to see some of the branches just posterior to it that they would be followed and ablated. It's effective, it would cause uh, improvement in the nasal obstruction, sneezing and nasal discharge in 100%, 90% and 70% of the patients respectively. Other simpler techniques to do the posterior nasal neurectomy were described, including the use of retic frequency applied bilaterally on the posterior part of the middle meatus and the posterior part of the inferior turbinate in non overlapping areas. And temperature should be around 60 degrees for the radio frequency, and this method is effective and safe. There are also other techniques using cryosurgery, ablation, or endoscopic laser ablation. The endoscopic posterior nasal neurectomy would reduce nasal sneezing, rhinorrhea, and obstruction at a month, three months, and six months from the operation. There are significant histological changes in the nasal mucosa following parasympathetic neurectomy. This includes significant reduction in the uh, cellular infiltrate, in the stromal edema, in the eosinophilic infiltration, reduction in mast cells and histamine, reduction in the mucosal acinar gland cells, and also a significant uh, reduction in interleukin-5 and nasal secretions. As doctors, we don't always believe in complementary medicine, but as doctors, we should always believe in scientific evidence. 
there are some evidence to support the use of acupuncture and allergic rhinitis. The American Association of Otolaryngology had made it an optional treatment with a grade B for the evidence quality. This was based on randomized controlled trials with some limitations and observational studies who are all consistent in their effect. The confidence, in the, the confidence level in the evidence is, however, low because there were some uh, methodological flaws in the studies, including that there were no comparison with the traditional medical therapy for allergic rhinitis. The placebo effect in trials for medical or complementary medicine for allergic rhinitis is quite significant. It can be greater than 50% symptoms improvement for the placebo group, and this should be taken into account while considering any new treatment. The exact mechanism of action of acupuncture in allergic rhinitis remains unknown. Some studies suggested that it reduces the production of interleukins, particularly interleukin-10 in allergic rhinitis and interleukin-6 and 10 in asthma. Several studies had showed some improvement in the patient's symptoms and quality of life uh, after acupuncture. It implied that the effect is mainly for the perineal type of allergic rhinitis, but new studies had also showed some effect in um, seasonal allergic rhinitis. There was no evidence of any significant harm associated with acupuncture and it may remain as an optional treatment for patients who have an interest in a non-pharmacological treatment for allergy. In summary, although allergen avoidance is desirable, it is frequently expensive and time-consuming and sometimes impossible like in the case of pollens for example. Antihistamines and topical nasal steroids are the main treatment for allergic rhinitis. Antihistamines will rapidly relieve itching and sneezing, but have little effect on nasal obstruction. They are more effective if used regularly rather than only ad hoc or in demand. Topical steroids are the most effective treatment for rhinitis, especially if it started before allergen exposure. Monoclonal antibodies for uh, leukotriene receptors antagonists may be helpful. Specific immunotherapy is highly effective, but access to the treatment is obviously limited. And surgery, either submucous diathermy of the inferior turbinus or posterior nasal neurectomy are effective. By this, we come to the end on this presentation on the non-medicinal treatment of allergic rhinitis. Salam alaikum.